Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. Before we get into our second segment of the day here on the show, I do want to remind you yet again that if you want to interact with the show a little bit more directly, the best way to do it is through our Super Chat, Super Things, and Super Stickers features here on YouTube, and also our website, GSMC Podcast on that. Great way to contribute and interact with the show. Love reading your comments on air, hearing your opinions in conjunction with mine. This makes the show that much better. But without further ado, let us jump into our second segment of the day here on the show. Talking some general Week 11 prop bets. A lot of interesting games, interesting storylines to cover here for certain players. We're getting into more divisional matchups here, more conference rivalries, so to speak, as well as we get deeper into the season. And so, my, expect my prop bet segments to get a lot more, you know, chock full of different players and how they're starting to react to certain situations. We're going to be talking about a lot of different teams, potentially teams battling for a playoff spot, potentially teams wanting to cement them. So this segment is going to be one of the more diverse ones over the next couple of weeks. And I'm excited to start in week 11 where we're going to see a lot of different things come to fruition so let's start off with one of those conference rivalries being renewed one of the more popular regular season matchups between these two teams chiefs bills let's talk about josh allen in this one i feel like you know being 3-0 against the chiefs in the regular season really kind of speaks to josh allen as a quarterback we're not going to talk about his playoff performance with the chiefs But I do feel like when Josh Allen in this environment where he's not necessarily playing for huge stakes and he's playing as well as he has this season, he's going to be as relaxed and poised as he's ever been in a game against the Chiefs in this one. So that's why I'm going to take the under on his interception total. It's a little bit of a weird prop bet. 0.5 interceptions and minus 137 to hit for you. But... I do feel like he's playing the best football. Granted, he did have two picks last week against Indy, but in this one, it feels a little different. This, out of all the games for the Chiefs, is the only one where they're technically projected to lose. So that means that we're looking at a 16-1 and season for the Chiefs. I was actually reading about how the Chiefs could perform the rest of the season on ESPN. It's a very interesting article breaking down their schedule strength and things of that nature. But this is what the game that a lot of pundits pinpointed for the kind of trap game for the Chiefs. So look for Josh Allen to continue to perform well against the Chiefs in the regular season. And I think that it's going to come down to how people think and realize what this Chiefs defense really is. Because think about it. They are generally good defense. But they're kind of overshadowed by certain things that are happening in these games. Like lucky situations. Like in the first game of the season, Isaiah Likely's toe being out of bounds. And I think that their schedule really is indicative of a team that would struggle defensively. So this will be the first game where an offense can truly test them and sustain drives. And so, if Josh Allen is as efficient as I think he will be, look for this to be the game where the Chiefs finally fall flat. So, that's why I think Josh Allen's going to hit the under in a little bit of a weird situation here in terms of prop betting. 0.5 interceptions. Now, let's talk about a receiver here who has been kind of topsy-turvy. A reception monster, not necessarily putting up the yardage like he did last year in his first All-Pro season in the league. But against, I believe, the Colts, it's going to be an interesting situation for, actually, the Jaguars. So another interesting situation here for Amon Ross St. Brown. And I'm giving a lot of respect here to this Jaguars defense, especially that secondary, was really stepped up. They held Justin Jefferson without a touchdown last week. And I feel like the Lions are starting to show a little bit of their vulnerability on the offensive side of the football. I think that in terms of 
one thing that took out to me in the Texans game was that patience kind of overwhelmed them from the Texans secondary and defense in general. I feel like the Texans were willing to be comfortable in zone coverage and limit the space that Amon Rossley Brown was able to get into. And of course, they made the necessary adjustments at halftime. But I feel like, you know, the Jaguars are a team that against these kind of opponents can generally slow them down. So look for Amon Ross St. Brown to potentially disappoint again. Under 65.5 receiving yards is my prop bet for him at minus 137. And it's no indictment of what his talent means to this team. It's just that I feel like there are ways where you can slow them down if you're patient on the defensive side of the football, especially on the back end. The Jaguars have proven that by no means... Are they a finished product of an elite NFL secondary? In fact, they're more like the exoskeleton of one. But they can slow teams down enough to make it look like the Jaguars could have been an even better team. And yet, you know, with all their foibles on the offensive side of the football, their foibles in coaching, they really haven't proven that they can win a game like this. And I don't think they will this one. But consider the fact that they can do certain things that frustrate teams. And one of them is stopping and limiting the pass game and your receivers, respectively. So look for Amon Rossi and Brown to have a pretty uncomfortable day against Jacksonville. Now let's transition to a running back here who we all know is one of everyone's favorites to bet on and one of of everyone's favorite players to watch in general in the National Football League, and that is Derrick Henry, an important AFC North showdown here. I feel like, you know, I could sit here and say this will be finally be the game where Derrick Henry gets shut down because of his age and it will get to him and it'll show his decline like I thought before the season when he made this move to Baltimore, but I don't think he ever will because this Baltimore offense always stays ahead of schedule. Lamar keeps everything intact he can perform a structure he knows when derrick henry is primed ready to go and smells blood and so this team will look like a well-oiled machine against pittsburgh i didn't say the pittsburgh steelers defense is going to be perhaps the best one in terms of slowing it down because they face lamar countless times and know what to expect but i think that opens up more avenues for derrick henry to wear down that front seven and thus open up more avenues in the passing game for Lamar. So I'm going to take the over here easily for Derrick Henry, 85.5 and minus 137 as well. So look for him to continue his solid production, even if, you know, Lamar Jackson runs into some roadblocks in this game. And so that's why I feel like, even though I'm respecting the Steelers' defense in this one, it's still going to be a game where Derrick Henry is going to dominate. And then for my fourth prop bet, let's talk about DK Metcalf here. Because this is a divisional game of high importance to Seattle. I want to stay within touching distance of the top of the NFC West. Stay in the playoff picture. And in order to do it, DK Metcalf needs to come back healthy for one. From that MCL spring he suffered before the bye. And with a vengeance. Because... If you know, all three of these Seattle receivers are playing at a high level, much like they did Sands DK Metcalf in that game against LA, then this unit's one to look out for in the second half of the season. And DK Metcalf's going to be the X factor. If Tyler Lockett and JSN can maintain what they've done without him, then adding him will only make this wide receiver core better. And in my opinion, you know, in this tough stretch of games where they have a lot of divisional opponents to face, the 49ers, Cardinals, and Cardinals again in the span of four weeks, I feel like DK is going to have a lot of opportunities to prove himself in this team. So, in the first divisional game back from the bye, after his injury, expect him to hit the over here. 65.5 receiving yards at minus 137 because the key to winning games for Seattle is in the pass game. 
they have to predicate themselves on the pass because I really don't think this offensive line is talented enough at all to support a solid running game no matter how good of a running back Kenneth Walker is. And so expect to see a lot of passing situations for Seattle and expect for DK Metcalf to be the one guy to bail them out more often than not. So that's why I feel like DK Metcalf's importance in these next four weeks or so, and even in the closing stages of the season where they play teams like the Packers and Rams again and really tough offenses to keep up with, that's where you're going to need DK Metcalf to really step up and say, I'm going to take over for this team to, to get us to the promised land. And so that's why I'm thinking so highly of DK Metcalf, even though there's going to be a lot of skepticism, a lot of apprehension surrounding him after this injury. And then the last kind of prop that I want to talk about here before we head to break lies with perhaps the best quarterback play in the AFC, if not the entire NFL over the past couple of weeks. Let's talk about Joe Burrow here. I feel like, you know, this is finally going to be the game where Joe Burrow is a little bit more mortal than we've seen him in these past couple of weeks because of the prowess of the Chargers defense. But I'm still scared to mention this prop because of what Joe Burrow has done in these past couple of weeks. Like I said, he's playing MEB caliber ball. His connection with the receivers is the best it's been. And the Chargers are kind of paper tigers in my opinion. And they really haven't played an offense that can challenge them like the Spangles offense. However, I'm going to stick with this bet in saying that Joe Burrow will hit the under at 265.5 passing yards at minus 137 but I still do not feel comfortable with it because I'm more reliant on the Spengals' offense continuing to strut their stuff than this Chargers' defense continuing to play top five scoring defense level football on that side of the football. So this bet could come back to haunt me, but... I think I'm going to stick with it just because I have to give the Chargers the benefit of the doubt here. But let me know what you think about all my prop bets for this week. Very interesting week, like I said, in terms of storylines around the league and how you might want to bet. But coming up after this short break, a little bit more of a positive injury update segment here. A couple of returns we're going to talk about for some potential players this week. We're going to be right back after that short break to see how it also affects you on the fantasy side of things. Looking for your daily fix 